most people will have heard that all that stuff about right and left hemispheres is pop science that was um, uh, blown out of the water about 30, 40 years ago. And, and in a way, they're right, and in a way, they're badly wrong. Uh, what was being said 30 or 40 years ago turns out now to be not right. But that's the way science progresses. We, 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 there was a lot of speculation after the first split brain operations in California in the 60s and 70s about the difference. And uh, to begin with, people said things like, well, the left is rational, but at least dependable, not very emotional, um, and linguistic, whereas the right hemisphere is kind of slightly airy-fairy, given the painting pictures and this kind of thing. Um, I think the, the safest thing to say is forget everything that you've heard about this topic. There clearly is a question to be answered here, even if we got the answer wrong. Why is it that the brain, which is an organ that exists to make connections, its power is in the connections between its billions of neurons, why is it divided down the middle? What's more, why are the two halves asymmetrical? And thirdly, why is the band of fibers, a relatively small band, I have to say, at the base of the brain called the corpus callosum, why only 2% of neurons cross it? Why is a lot of its effect uh, allowing one hemisphere to tell the other one to basically keep out of it for now? So these questions fascinated me. Um, Cut a long story short, I researched it for 30 years. And I think the point is this. It's an evolutionary adaptation that is necessary for all living creatures. And it's not just human brains that have this asymmetry and this dividedness. All the brains we know have it. Why? Because they have to solve, the creature has to solve, a problem which involves paying attention to the world in two quite different, diametrically opposite, in fact, ways at the same time. One is to pay a narrow beam of highly focused attention to a detail that you're already familiar with, you know what it is, and you want it. It's basically usually food. Uh, it can also be, for example, a, a twig to build a nest or something else that you want in the environment that you're going to grab and you're going to utilize. And so important is this, that this is really the main function of the left hemisphere. The right hemisphere, meanwhile, has been left with the job of looking out for everything else, because if you're only looking at a three-degree attentional arc, you won't spot the predator, so that you'll become someone else's lunch while you're getting yours. Equally, you will miss your kin, your mate, your offspring. So there's two kinds of attention paid by the hemispheres. This is the radical distinction to make at the start. The left hemisphere pays a narrow beam attention to something it wants to grab. The right hemisphere pays broad, sustained, open, vigilant attention to the whole picture. And the way in which you pay attention changes what you find. So if you are looking for just a detail that you know what it is, your world appears to be made up of certain fragments that are fixed, uh, isolated, explicit, and lifeless. Whereas if you see what the right hemisphere sees, it sees that nothing is ever completely fixed, completely certain. Everything is connected ultimately with everything else, that a lot of what matters is implicit rather than explicit, and that this is a fundamentally animate world. So those are the, if I had to do it very quickly, that's probably what I'd say. 